Happy Fragrant Friday, Fraghead. Hey everybody, this has been here at That Cologne Guy coming at you with another review. You know, this week I am taking a look at none other than Oud Lemon Mint uh, by Mansara. And before I dive into the review, let me just quickly say, since last Friday, yet again, we've had quite the smattering of new subscribers, and I really, really do appreciate that. Uh, so welcome aboard. Uh, I have new content every single Friday. I always start off um, by wishing you, of course, a happy Fragrant Friday. And um, that that's the channel. I do some reviews. I do some top tens. I just do, I do a little bit of subscriber-themed uh, questions. Uh, just a little bit about everything. And so uh, check out my channel. Welcome aboard. You know what to do if you haven't subscribed already. And then what I'd like you to do is always uh, like and leave a comment. If you don't have anything to say about this particular fragrance, uh, always feel free to leave your scent of the day. I love to read what you guys are wearing. And then I go I've mentioned this before, but I like to camp out, wait a day or two, and then uh, open up for Grantica or some other site, and then just sit and check out what you guys are all wearing. And I really stumbled upon some gems just based on that. So I really appreciate all of the support. So so this one is a 2016 release, and I could not find, by the way, uh, I think it's a citrus aromatic, but it might be a citrus woodsy. I'm not really sure of the category other than and, and I'll tell you why I'm not going to just immediately say it's aromatic. It's it's called lemon, oud lemon mint. So, but I but the the mint is, I wouldn't even say toned down. I really get more like you know jasmine. I don't get a lot of mint uh, in this one. But uh, anyway, that's the classification. And it's, of course another one by Pierre Montal. And why is that relevant? Let's talk about the nomenclature when it comes to the house and the in the name. Last week I probably should have mentioned a little bit more about the house itself. I focused more on the name. So when the house, I, I looked up this up because I was curious. So Pierre Montal is the nose behind this fragrance and you might think think well wait a minute you mean montal you know those bottles that has like the little the little dangling star on it i'll put a picture up here uh if you've seen montal bottles before so in 2008 pierre montal yes that montal uh of the house montal uh in 2008 he started this company mancera and then in 2017 his daughter took it over amelie a-M-E-L-I-E, -E. Amelie, in 2017, she took this over. Now, why is that relevant? It's relevant because for two reasons. Number one, I had always considered the Montals and the Manceras kind of in the same class of what I mentioned earlier, which is they, they just smell divine. And yes, they're not going to be groundbreaking, perhaps, but I just really like them. The other thing, too, that they have in common is if you've noticed, uh, the name itself include for both houses includes the dominant notes as they see it right so this isn't called like you know this isn't called like seduction or something like that it's not called like you know seduction primitive or you know prim primal seduction or something uh, notice it's called oud lemon mint so it just gives you the main notes of the uh, fragrance and that falls in line with uh, montal so no surprise there that there is that connection um, and as i said earlier i would also uh, consider those two houses uh, in the same realm as many of the mfk like houses that i seem to really like which is uh, just fine uh, smelling luxurious regal uh, etc Okay, so those that's the nomenclature, that's the house, that's the name. Really, the only thing I'll say, uh, again, is I would not have called this Oud Lemon Mint. I would have called this uh, Oud Lemon, you know, Oud, Oud Lemon Jasmine, Oud Lemon Vanille. How's that? I, I, I would have substituted another note for mint, probably vanilla, um, perhaps even leather, uh, and even jasmine. I, I just don't get a lot of mint. So if you're looking for uh, a mint-based fragrance, uh, this, this certainly won't be uh, one you'll want to consider. Okay, so let's take a look at more on the notes then. Uh, here, here's what I get. You know, it, in, in the opening blast, the initial blast, you get um, a very powerful lemon, no doubt. 
So, uh, and I read, by the way, that it was Sicilian lemon, if that matters, but uh, either way, um, it is a quite distinct lemon. The second thing, though, in the top notes is you're also going to get an, uh, just a little bit of almond. And I say that because, you know, for, for about a half hour, there uh, there are some, this almost, you know what this almost seems like in the first half hour? It almost seems like a L'Homme Ideal by uh, Guerlain uh, Flanker. Of course it's not, but it, it does have that DNA in it for just a little bit, uh, almost like a Leum Ideal eh, by uh, Guerlain. Uh, and then, of course, it veers in a different direction. Now, the, the mid-notes um, include, of course, you guessed it, Oud. Uh, and I will actually say, I, had, I did have one more thing for nomenclature. So one thing you'll want to notice is, so Oud, Oud is A-O-U-D -D here, A-O-U-D right notice that and here's what i've noticed so so the formal name is, is it's listed as a note is agar wood agar wood um is oud but it's when it, when they list it as a note it will often say agar wood and then people will say oud so i've talked about this before oud was a you know had its huge heyday um uh, a while back uh, i was a little reticent to be on the to jump on the bandwagon and and oh did that all go away after i smelled it so uh, i'm a huge fan of oud i kind of thought i would like this one and of course i do but um i want to go over a couple things uh, with regard to that note so in this fragrance uh if you don't say agar wood what I've noticed is um, is the British spelling, the UK spelling tends to include the A. So sometimes you will see A-O-U-D, and then sometimes you will see O-U-D. Now, I don't know if it's a strict UK-US difference. So you guys know that the, the UK and the US uh, spelling system is different. Uh, most um, ex-colonies of uh, uh, the UK use the UK spelling. Um, and then the Americans, of course, we always have to uh, do our own thing. Uh, and so uh, we have a different spelling. So if you say realize, uh, we spell it with a Z here or a Z, uh, and they spell it with an S. So there, there are many, many words uh, indeed um, that uh, differ in terms of spelling depending on whether you are in England or another country like Australia or New Zealand and the US. So what I noticed is a tendency, and I don't know if it's strictly that UK, US, but I notice a tendency that the Europeans um, tend to uh, spell it with an A, but I just wanted to point that out. So so whether it's A-O-U-D or O-U-D, it's the same thing. It's agar wood. Now the second thing I wanted to mention about this note is there are three regions where you always want to know where you got the oud. There are three types of oud, very, very prominent. And, and so the first one is this very earthy, stinky, uh, unmistakable, almost animalic uh, oud. And then the second one is, is, is a medicinal oud that is it's almost like a eucalyptus. It's, 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 it's incredibly uh, uh, medicinal. And then the third one is a very sweet uh, oud. So, so where if you if you haven't had many oud fragrances, you'll always want to double check where it comes from. And if if I'm not mistaken, I'm I'm pretty sure that I know the Indi. So if it's around, so the three regions are basically uh, Indonesia. Most oud comes from Indonesia, uh, Southeast Asia like Cambodia, Laos, and then the third one would be India, the Indian subcontinent, neighboring countries. So. If you wanted to look at something more medicinal, I think it's the Indian area, uh, and then I think it is more, if I'm not mistaken, I think it is uh, a, a very stronger smell in Cambodia and uh, Southeast Asia, and then, and then it gets into the sweeter element in Indonesia. That said, I think that the main thing is just to know that there are three types. This one, this one really rides the 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 line between sweet and medicinal slightly more to the sweet side so this is another fragrance that's going to be great for those of you who are a little lukewarm or don't eat, or just never tried oud before this would be a great way to um uh, dip your toes in the water and and uh, and kind of check out oud as opposed to something that's going to be earthy and stinky and on almost you know animalic almost like a civet note it can be very 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 strong and take over the whole uh, you know, room and so uh, this is not that this is quite subtle uh, if I had to guess I think it'd be a, a, probably an oud from near 
uh, uh, in, in India. I have a feeling like it might be something that's near um, India because it is, again, on the medicinal, slightly sweet side. But I, I, I don't know. So I just wanted you guys to know that it's not the the very, very strong. I don't want to use the word off-putting because I love oud. But uh, it's not the on the strong side. It's more on the sweet, subtle side. Okay, so those are the main notes uh, on the in the, ba- in the mid notes, excuse me. And then on the base notes, I get leather, vetiver, uh, white musk, and vanilla. So, so here's the thing about this fragrance that I really appreciate. You might say, okay, it starts off with lemon and, and almond. Then you have oud in the in the mid note, and then in the base note you have leather, vetiver, white musk, and then vanilla. So these this is quite. This is quite the concoction, uh, isn't it? Uh, when it comes to this fragrance, there is a lot. <clears throat> excuse me, there is a lot going on in this fragrance. And you know what? When you do something like this, it's either gonna it's either gonna work or be this Frankenstein uh, disaster. And this one really, really works. Much like Cedra Boise last week, um, I certainly can't say that this one is a. Uh, uh, a fragrance that develops over time. I do think it's a linear scent, just like the last one, and I do not think at all that that is a limitation. Not by any stretch of the imagination. I really like this one. In fact, I like I like both of them from minute one all the way uh, out, and, and that's something that I really appreciate about uh, this fragrance. So those are the notes, and um, I just wanted to point that out. Second thing, uh, or I guess the next thing I wanted to say was uh, these are... In, uh, interesting to note, these are 120 milliliter bottles in this house or 60. So what that means is they either have four. So so for the Type A uh, folks out there, um, if you like things to you know to be you know uh, almost like an you know OCD format, if you if you like things to be in order and 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 clear and clean and sleek, then you will like this house because notice that they do 120 milliliter or 100 or 60 milliliter sizes which means it's a 4.0 ounce or a 2.0 ounce uh, on the U.S. side. So we don't have to ever say things like, you know, 3.3, 3.4. There are no points here, no fives. Uh, so that's really kind of neat. I think it's one of the, probably the only house that has a 120 mil and then a 60 mil size for the uh, two sizes for each release that they do. I like it. I think it's cool. It's kind of fun that it's a four ounce uh, and a two ounce. All right. So uh, now let's talk about uh, age and, and gender and season um, and onward. When it comes to this fragrance, um, so so here's the thing. Why don't we do? We'll we'll just do um, gender right now. So if we're gonna say this is masculine, this is feminine, and then the microphone is the uh, unisex range. This one is this one is unisex, and then leans feminine. In my estimation, I think with jasmine and and vanilla, I feel. I feel like it leans feminine, but I still think it's in the unisex category. They market it as for women and men, women and men, but I, I don't see this as quote unquote too feminine at all uh, for me. I like this fragrance. I definitely don't see it. Um, you, look, the counter argument to that would be if it has oud in it, um, how could you say that it's, you know, it leans uh, feminine? So it, everyone has their own perspective. To me, this one would be unisex slightly to the feminine side too feminine for me absolutely not uh, I, I really enjoy this fragrance um and and i, I really it, it's another one though that it's kind of like in some of the mfks uh that i reviewed where i guess like the worst thing that you could say about this is that it just it smells nice uh, right that's like the worst thing that you could say like it might not have a certain identity that jumps out at you but it's going to garner uh, compliments and attention I really like that about uh, this house so that is uh, that's the gender now the age is another one I think that this is going to be for the 35 and up crowd I, I still don't see this being worn by you know uh, somebody finishing their first paid internship they just got their first check paycheck deposited uh, and uh, they got it's it's payday and they're off to the clubs Okay, so with regard to season, uh, this is another fragrance that for me is is going to be highly versatile, and I I have a feeling that most people will probably say this is more of a spring summer because when you hear things like you know lemon and jasmine, that said though, then all of a sudden in the base notes you get things like leather and uh, vetiver and oud in the in the mid note. So 
you know, this one is another one that I think for me is practically 365 days a year. I don't know that the season really is what matters here. You know, maybe in the heart of winter, would I, would I, you know, jump for this? Well, I probably would because I do like it. But I think a lot of people might not, you know, associate this fragrance with the heart of the winter, the cold climates. But I think it would do just fine. Um, and I do. I think it's uh, 365 days a year. Now, if you're checking out this episode just specifically for um, feedback on this one. I think most reviewers will put this as a spring summer, but uh, I, I, to me, the actual smell itself uh, trumps uh, season. Okay, and that's that's the way I feel about this one. Same way with um, versatility is going to be quite high. This one, this one is another one with the one exception. You know, again, is it is it a you know is it a twenties club scent? Probably not. Would you wear this to you know a rock slash metal concert? Maybe not. Other than that, though, this is highly versatile. I mean, you could wear you know t-shirt and this would be great. You could wear um, a suit. This would do well. Uh, evening. This would be a great office scent. This is another scent that just it it does. It just smells nice. And so uh, this would do well in the office. I think you'd be fine. I'd be I'd go easy on the trigger if you did wear it during the day in the office, especially if you are in a lot of closed room meetings. Um, but but I I would wear it uh, without reservation. I wouldn't have any issue. And 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 actually. Actually, let's let's go ahead and talk about the longevity, uh, sillage, and projection. Really, more good news because when it comes to the longevity, I I felt again. Uh, now, I got a little bit better longevity with Cedrois Bose, but I will say this one is another eight hour plus. So you're going to get a work shift out of that, and I think that is phenomenal. Um, I like. I like the projection a lot on this one because it's another one that is going to be an arm's length away for the first two to three, and then it's going to really start to settle down, but it does not dissipate completely and disappear. So again, for so if you for the siage, if you walk by people and you know for the duration, meaning for the first eight hours of this fragrance you're probably going to get noticed. People will pick it up, and I think that's a good thing. And so uh, it's right really where you want it. This is an EDP, and it does exactly what you want it to do. So very happy with longevity projection and sillage. Now, when it comes to the the, the rating, uh, I had to really wrestle because you guys know I don't do half sprays. And so, so here's the thing that... I wrestled this whole week between a four and a five spray out of five. On Saint de la Boise, that was pretty easy, clear five out of five. Do I like this one as much as Saint de la Boise? I don't think I can say that I do. I think I like Saint de la Boise just a little bit better. But do I like it less enough that it's worth taking off a spray? So I. I don't know that I can come up with any reason as why we should dock other than, I mean, see, here's the thing. It is, it is slightly, you know, unisex leaning feminine for me, but I don't think that is a, you know, reason to dock it. I don't, um, because I still strongly feel like it's a very, very versatile fragrance in an ideal world. Because you guys have, I know, you, you have begged and emailed and, you know, sent me DMs on Instagram, you know, left and right saying, please give half sprays. We want, you know, we want half sprays. We, and, I, and I understand that, okay? But uh, there is demand for the half spray, but it's not going to happen. So I am feeling, okay, a little, uh, quite appreciative of this house. And so I am going to give this a lofty, come from behind victory, five out of five. This is a five out of five for me, um... You know, it works. I think if you look at each note and you look at each note and where it is on the pyramid, you would think, okay, this is just like this Frankenstein odd mix of of notes that's just going to be a, a disaster. Uh, it's going to smell like a urinal cake and, and I'm going to want no part of it. It actually does not play out that way. I really like it. Um, it'd be a great gift actually for practically anybody um, in the what 30 to 35 and on up range, man or woman. I also think it's a great choice for uh, it's a great choice for the uh, people who want to who, who dip into the oud world. Um, and then I guess finally, the only real 
complaint. I just don't know that it's worth taking off a spray. I, I'm not a fan of the name. I mean, it's there. I don't pick up mint here. I, I don't pick up mint, you know. So if you're, if you're looking for a mojito vibe to this, it's not going to be there. You're really going to tap more into things like jasmine. Um, so I guess I would call it oud, oud lemon jasmine or oud lemon uh, vetiver, vanille, something. Uh, so, so Pierre Montal and Amalie Montal, if you guys are listening and the off chance that you're watching this episode, consider a name change for the re-release. Uh, other than that, um, all systems go for this one. Okay, so five out of five sprays for this 2016 release from Mancera. I'm going to go one on each wrist, one on each side of the neck, and then one on the smartphone pocket. All right, so... Five out of five sprays, probably closer to 4.5, but you know what? Uh, let's go with five. Boom. 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 Ah. And... And practically, you know, in fact, dry as a bone. I've got one left just for you, okay? Just for you guys. And there you have it. And uh, I'm going to end it right there. Next week, I'll be continuing on the, the Mancera uh, sampler set train. I'm looking forward to that one. And by the way, let me just say, if you guys feel like I'm really uh, hyping these up a little bit too much, because I've had two glowing reviews in a row, uh, and if you're missing uh, the Eeyore, uh, he will be coming, because I can tell you now, at least in the sampler set, I know of at least one that I'm a little lukewarm on. So... Uh, so there you have it. Another episode by the boards. Happy April Fool's Day uh, to you. And, of course, uh, happy Fragrant Friday. Don't forget, uh, like, comment, subscribe, and always remember, Fragrance Marks, the celebration of today. Take care, everybody. So, as I said, I'm working through a sampler set with Mancera. And here's the thing about this week that's really been apparent to me. You know, now that I've done uh, so many reviews, I have, to, I have to say one thing that has, has become uh, quite clear to me is that I, I tend to like the niche fragrances that uh, quote-unquote smell nice. And what I mean by that is is they might not be the most daring releases, and they might not smell you know, like a, a pancake in, in Brussels, Belgium, um, or, or, or bread in Morocco. Uh, that said, they just smell incredibly nice, uh, fantastic, as I like to say, uh, and of course, very high quality. So Mancera is really no surprise that I'm going to be a, bit, a pretty big fan of uh, a fair amount of these that I'm looking at. Um, I, you know, I like MFK. What, what, what house comes to mind for you when you think of, you know, maybe they're not the most daring house in the world, uh, but they just really put out very, very fine fragrances that smell great and get lots of compliments. So, you know, for me, it's going to be along the lines of the um, Hermes, Guerlain, MFK, uh, Mancera, Montal. And then, of course, of course, I'd have to say Amouage as well. It's just that the Amouage and the Creed really, really ask you to put out a lot of money. Whereas these, these, I like these because, like for example, this one's 180 bucks for 120 milliliter, four point out, four four ounce, excuse me, um, right on the dot. And so I, I actually kind of like. Uh, that the, the the second tier, if you will, uh, in, in terms of pricing, not quality, uh, uh, niche products. And so this house is another one that I'm I'm really enjoying uh, quite a bit. And so uh, let me know, let me know what you think when you think of a house that perhaps isn't quote unquote daring in the sense that their you know their their uh, fragrances might not be the most unique. Uh, smelling in the world, but they just garner compliments. You just like them. They smell divine. They smell regal, royal, epic, and the list goes on.